Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at atoms, elements and compounds and we're going to focus a little bit on atoms and um, the, the example I've chosen here is randomly I've chosen sodium which is an element and if we were able to magnify many many millions of times into the sodium atom we would see that it's made of nice neat rows and columns because it's a solid of uh, atoms and those atoms are sodium atoms. You won't find any other atoms present in the element sodium. So there's lots of those there, neatly arranged. And we can say that atoms are the simplest part of an element that can exist. Okay, atoms can be broken down into other particles, subatomic particles, but the simplest part of any element is the atom of that element. Okay, so atoms are very important. They make up elements and in fact pretty much everything. And where do we find these elements? They are found on the periodic table. The periodic table is something that we will work with a lot throughout our chemistry course. Um, and it will be a big resource for information about the elements. Okay, so we don't need to memorize it, but we will know, need to know how to read it. So let's just have a look at a couple of, a couple of elements here. I've got that sodium we've been looking at. It's got the symbol, it's got the name, and a couple of numbers that we're going to investigate in future videos. We can pluck out one more. Let's have a look at this one. This is oxygen, symbol O, and some numbers that go along with it. Again, we're going to find the meaning of those in another video. But we have approximately 100 naturally occur occurring elements. You'll find a few more than 100 actually on the periodic table, but naturally occurring, we've got about 100. Some very interestingly name named ones towards the end there if you've got a copy of that to look at. Okay, so um, that's the idea between our atoms and elements. Now we're going to look at chemical reactions and what they're all about. So let's just get that uh, written out quick. Um, it might be worth you making, getting some paper and making some notes on this because we're going to write down some quite important points. But the first thing we're going to look at is this idea of chemical reactions. Now, when we have two elements reacting together, we call that a chemical reaction doesn't have to be elements it could be uh, compounds as well but they make a, or they can make a chemical reaction or can have a chemical reaction and another important thing about chemical reactions is that we get new substances made so one or more new substances are made when we have chemical reactions also when we have a chemical reaction there's often an exchange or a measurable change in energy a detectable change in energy okay and by energy we mean it could be the release of heat it could be uh, light energy given off or sound energy and in fact sometimes heat energy can be taken in as well okay so we get a detectable change in energy these new substances we can call those or they can be compounds if they're made of more than one element we make compounds now, this is an important keyword, and we need to know exactly what that means. So a compound is when we have two or more elements chemically combined in fixed proportions. Those three lines are all important for that definition. And the other important thing to know about compounds is that they can only be separated into elements by chemical reactions. They cannot easily be separated into elements. We're going to look at the idea of fixed proportions a bit more in a moment. Let's just put that neat, slightly more neatly in the center and have a look at a couple of examples of chemical reactions. Okay, so the first one I'm going to look at involves, again, our friend sodium. So here's uh, some sodium, which we know is an element. Uh, the symbol being Na, capital N, small a. The second letter in an element is always lowercase. Sodium is a reactive metal. It's so reactive, in fact, if you held it in your hand, the moisture in your hand could actually cause it to heat up and burn you. We've got chlorine gas, which is a yellowy green kind of gas, and it's actually poisonous. If you were to breathe that in too much, it could make you very, very sick. But we can react those together. So we can take our sodium, just make that a bit smaller. We can put it into our jar over here, obviously taking the lid off first. And what you would see if you added a little bit of water, in fact, to get it going, to get that reaction going, a lot of heat and light. 
and we would get the formation of a new compound. And that compound, you may have guessed it already, would be sodium chloride. A new compound, sodium chloride. And the symbol for that would be NaCl. Okay, please note also that the chlorine becomes chloride when it's in the compound. And we get uh, some heat and light given off, as we said, we often get a detectable change in energy. So that's what would happen for that example. And in fact, sodium chloride is common salt. Common salt. Don't know why I wrote it twice there. Um, and that's actually the stuff you put on your chips. I would absolutely not recommend you get salt in this way to put on your chips, but it is the same salt that you have in your food. Okay, so this is how two elements can react together to make something completely new and something completely different with different properties. The second one I wanted to look at was this idea of hydrogen reacting with oxygen. So if we have hydrogen and oxygen, we end up with water. Okay, now hydrogen is a colorless gas. Oxygen is also a colorless gas, but we react them together and we get amazingly water, which is a liquid a very important liquid. And one example where we see that happening is when we use hydrogen as a fuel on something like the Space Shuttle. Space Shuttle is a ro uh, rocket that can go into space and come back again. But we have tanks of hydrogen and oxygen, H2 and O2. Chemical reaction, which involves basically burning them, and we get our water formed. All those, all that, what looks like smoke that comes off a launch of a shuttle is actually mostly water, hardly any pollutant at all. So here we've got our equation. We've got what's called a word equation at the top and a formula equation at the bottom. And our water molecule looks like this. We've got H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen. Uh, I'm just going to point out here that actually this formula equation is not balanced. We're going to look at how do we balance equations later. But if you were to balance it, you would put a two in front of the hydrogen and a two in front of the water. But we're not focusing on that for this video. What we're going to look at next is this idea that we said that the elements combine or the atoms combine in fixed proportions when we have a uh, compound formed. Okay, so for hydrogen, we've got hydrogen and oxygen that are in what we call fixed proportions. Okay, so what we actually mean by that is that we've got, for water, the formula is H2O. So let's just highlight those. And for every two hydrogens, you're going to have one oxygen. Okay, so we can say the ratio of atoms of hydrogen to oxygen is two to one. So that means if we had some water and there were 20 hydrogens, you know, because they combine in fixed proportions, you're going to have 10 oxygens. And similarly, if we knew we had, say, 25 oxygens, you could work out that we have 50 hydrogens. Okay, so this is what we mean by fixed proportions. Let's just have a look at another example. This is magnesium chloride, and those two combine in fixed proportions. For every one magnesium, we have two chlorines. So it's a ratio of one to two. And again, for example, 400 magnesiums would give us 800 chlorines. And let's have a look at one more example, slightly more tricky. We've got aluminium oxide. That's in a ratio of two to three, or the proportions are two aluminium for every three oxygen. So if we had 20 aluminium, 30 oxygen, and imagine we had 40, if you've worked it out, 60 oxygens. Because a ratio of two to three, or proportions of two to three, would give 40 to 60 if we started off with 40 aluminium. Okay, so some important points there. This is this last slide was about fixed proportions in compounds, fixed com proportions of atoms. But that's about it for the video. So thanks for watching and see you soon.